Hi everyone. Here's a quick video on creating text and editing text and adding effects in Adobe Photoshop and very similar in Photopia Online also. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with a new document. So I'm going to come up here to click on a new file and I'm going to start off with just a basic 800 by 800 pixel. Please make sure you change this to pixels. Do not put inches. 800 inches is quite a large file. 800, 800 pixels. Um, and we're ready to go. Um, the background contents are white. If we could change it here, although we're just going to add a new background layer. Let's go ahead and create this file, this document. All right. So I'm going to start off by just adding, uh, I'm going to add a black doc, uh, a black background. So let's come down here to our 5050, and I'm going to add a solid color. And let's just change this black. Perfect. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and add some text. To add some type, we're going to start with our type tool over here. Uh, the shortcut is T for type. Oops, sorry, I've got to change my color. Click OK on that and let's get going. All right, come over here to my type tool. And I'm just going to single click one time. Now, this is just my method of operations. This is the way I work. There's other ways to do it, but this is just my preference. So I'm going to go ahead and single click and I'm just going to type uh, my last name. Let's go K N D A L L. I think I got an extra one. All right. From here, you can edit it if you highlight it. Uh, once you're done typing, you could click Escape or go to your uh, Move tool. We can move it around. The way I like to do this, my preference is to resize something, I like to do it from my Move tool, not from the Type tool. You can do it either way. But I'm going to come up here where it says Show Transform Controls. And this is the way I prefer to grab a corner and we could just go ahead and make that bigger. Now, if you wanted to use the, te the text tool, we could double click on it, come up here to the, the font size and change the number over here. I find it much easier to just use these corners when you're off of the type tool. You got to be um, on your move tool, show transform controls, or you could always hit control T, which is for transform for free transformation. We can get the size just right. Oops, I'm not going to hold shift. The new version of Photoshop, you don't have to hold shift to hold constraint. If you hold shift, it's going to be able to scrunch it or flatten it, stuff like that. So let's just leave it as is. Do not hold shift. All right. So once we have that transformation, I'm going to go ahead and enter. I'm going to lock it right there. Now, for the sake of this assignment, I want to see that we can now change the colors and we could change the whole colors and partial. So I'm going to go back to my type tool, T for type, um, and click in here. And if you want to change all of them, I'm going to select it all up at, across the top. We could change the color like that. You could also do that for part of it. If you just want to change a certain letter, I'm going to just click in here, highlight just the first letter and we can change the shape. Oops. Let me cancel that. I hold on. Let me come over there. I got the K highlighted and let's go to green and there we go. All right. And then once we're done, I'm going to go back to my move tool. All right. So there is, we can change, um, just a part of it. All right, let's go ahead and create another one. For sake of the assignment, we're gonna now do another one. Let's type again. Um, let's type, oh, right now it's all in black. So I'm still typing. The letters are in black. I could see the black up here at the top. Uh, it is typing. If I change the color, nothing's gonna happen because nothing is selected. So let me double click right here, double click. And that's gonna highlight my text. All right, let's go ahead and change this to anything. Let's go to white and there we go. Resize it. I'm going to hit Escape, uh, Control T, Transform, and let's go ahead and make this bigger. All right. So for this next one, what I want you to do is let's go ahead and hit Enter to apply the transformation. On this one, what I'm going to do is add a drop shadow. So all the effects for text are under here where it says Effects. Actually, let me go ahead. I'm going to still, okay, I'm on my type tool. Let me change the font. I want you, for the assignment, I do want different fonts for all this. Your fonts, your colors are all up to you, all right? You can do whatever fonts and um, colors you want, okay? Ah, let's make this a little bit bigger. Nope, oh, nope, hold on. There we go. And let's go ahead and enter. All right, let's go back and add an effect to it. So down here at the bottom of our Layers toolbar, there's the effects, and I'm going to go to Drop Shadow, which is at the very bottom. So let's go ahead and 
uh, the drop shadow is open up here on my other screen, but here's my different styles. Here's my drop shadow, and here are all the other effects. Now, you can turn them on and off by just check marking them. If you want to change it, you actually have to click on it. If you want to add an inner shadow, this turns the inner shadow on, but you can't change the settings until you click on that layer. Now, these are the, cha these are the settings for inner shadow. So let me turn that one off. Drop shadow is turned on but I've got to click on it to now work on that. Now I'm going to change my drop shadow to just something bright for sake of this video. And so there's the green. Now I can uh, edit it. First one I usually play with is the opacity, is how strong you want it. There it's brighter and lighter. If they make it more opaque, it's, it's brighter, darker. I'm going to change the distance. It's going to move my shadow away, change the angle of it right here. I usually like to have a diagonal Drop shadow off to the side like that, coming from the top right. Um, and the spread is going to affect like how little or or how little or less um, feather or blur there is, and then we can move the distance away. Okay. Now, if you come up with something like this, that makes it hard to read, so you might have to come back and let's adjust the opacity. You know, you don't always want just a real bright drop shadow. Sometimes just a real nice light kind of breaks it away from the background, gives it some contrast, makes it stand out. All right, you're going to do on this assignment, you do whatever you like, all right? Make it look the best you can. That's it. I'm going to click OK. All right, let's do the next one. I'm going to go uh, T for type, single click, and let's just type Kindle again. I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to double click on it. Let's change the font to anything. You choose whatever fonts you want. I'm going to go to my Move tool. Let's grab a corner. Nope, I did that again. Right on the corner. There we go. I'm going to stretch it out. I really don't like that font. Let me go to my type tool, T for type. Double click. Oops, there it's all highlighted. Now I can change uh, change the fonts to whichever one. Uh, let's do... <laughs> all right, let's just... I'll just grab this one. All right, let me grab this corner. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger still. Um, again, I do want you to mix it up, try different things, try different colors. Let's change it from white again. Double click. I went to my type tool, double click. Now I can change the font color. Let's do a gray or something like that. Let's just see what happens there. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom in a little bit. Let's go control plus. There we go. All right. And enter. Let's go back to my move tool. All right, so let's go ahead and add an effect to this layer again. So I have this layer selected. You can see I'm on this layer. Uh, turn it on and turn it off. I'm going to go ahead and add an effect. I'm going to go to Bevel and Emboss. And there are your options. Really play around with this one. These are have some really fun options. You can increase the depth, make it bigger or smaller, give it that 3D look. You can change the size of it. There are certain ones that don't look good. Um, we could also then, you know, change the color of the highlights and the shadow mode, but play with all these. These are really fun. I also want you to add a small outer glow on this one. So I'm going to click on the word outer glow and you could change that. I'm going to lessen that one a little bit. And one other one for this third one is to add a stroke onto it. So let's go ahead and click on stroke and there um, we could change the location just like in Adobe Illustrator where you can change it to inside outside and the stroke size all right for this one we're going to leave it just like this with these three effects on it uh, we have the bevel and emboss which gives it that 3d effect we've got the stroke which is the black outline on the edge of it and then we have the outer glow to kind of make it stand out and give it a little extra emphasis all right so let's go ahead and add another text layer let me come over here to my type tool tool or you can just click T for text. I'm going to hit T for text. Single click. Let's go ahead and type. I'm going to go all capitals this time. Let me zoom out. Control minus, minus, space. Oops, that wasn't space. Oops, I was hitting space where I'm still typing. I got to exit at that before you space bar. Let me go to my move tool. Grab a corner. And we can stretch it bigger. All right, so we've got our next one. Now, this one I'm going to do what's called a clipping mask, where I lay an image over it. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves an image. I'm going to come over to a Google image search that I already have open for the ocean right here on um, this image, uh, not the thumbnail. Make sure you click and grab a full size image. I'm going to right click, copy image. Let me come back to Photoshop. 
I'm going to make sure I'm fully in Photoshop and let's go ahead and paste it, Control V. And then I'm going to paste it right on top. Now what we're going to do is just use this as a clipping mask to the font or the text below it. And that's really easy. It's super simple. Just right click on layer one and create clipping mask. And it's going to basically cut it to the text that we have typed. All right, so we got this and I'm going to do one more. Oops, I'm on that layer. If I want to move this, let's go ahead um, and link them. I'm going to highlight. I'm going to click on one, hold shift. So I grab both of these layers, right click, link layers. They're linked. So therefore, when I move the text Kindle, the water, the image is going to move with it also. All right, there's going to be one more that I want to add for this assignment. Let me zoom out one time. Um, and let's go to a new type layer, single click. Let's do Kindle one more time. Um, double click. We could change the font to um, any font. Again, for this assignment, you're choosing any font you want, any font, any colors. I just want to, I'm looking for the different styles and effects on this. There, I'm going to grab the corner, grab this bigger, Kendall. And this one you may remember from Adobe Illustrator, where we could come up and apply an envelope up here at the top. So let me come back. Oh, sorry. Let me go to my type tool and click right here where it says warp text. It should have like a letter with a little line to an arch or arc. We played with this quite a bit in Adobe Illustrator. But if you haven't, um, if you want to, just go ahead and play around. Look at these different ones. There's arch, arc, um, and wave flag are probably my favorites. But I'm just going to apply an arch to this and give it a little bit of a, oops, where's my, let me try that one more time. Click on here. Sorry, I'm gonna go to arch, oops, but I have to give it a bend. All right, and there we can see to do a, to an, this is an arch versus an arc. We'll bend the letters outward like this. For this font, I think I'm gonna stick with the arch. All right, play with these settings, experiment, figure out, have fun with it. Let me click off of this one. Okay, one last thing I wanna do for this assignment. Uh, before you screenshot it, I do want your zoom level to be 100%. It's down here at the bottom. So I'm going to do one, uh, con zoom in, control plus. I can see that the zoom level is 100% down here in this bottom left corner, 100%. Uh, I'm going to resize my window to match it pretty much. And I do want you to screenshot it with your layers toolbar. But before we do this, as an additional exercise, just to clean this up, I'm going to put everything into a group, all into one folder. So let me come down here in my layers toolbar at the bottom. There is a create a new group. It's a folder where I can click on that. And here's the new group. Now I'm going to add all these layers to it. So I can, if you want, we can move them one by one. I could click and drag this into the group, this um, folder right here. And you can see what it does is it moves in just a little bit. Now, if I turn off this group where it says group one, actually, let me double click on that. And I'm going to call this text. These are going to be all my text files are going to be in this one layer. If I turn this on, okay, let's move the rest of them. I'm going to move them all at once now, though. So if you want to select more than one layer, you could hold control and it'll allow you to select multiple layers. That's holding control. I could skip around or the quick way in this case, I can click on the first, this top one, right? The top font, hold shift click on the bottom one and it's going to grab all my text layers and I can move them all at once into this uh, font group or text group. Now, the way I know this works is because let me go ahead and close this, hit the little arrow, this little triangle, and there, everything is in my text folder in this text group. Now, if you want to double check, see if you did it right, you could turn that off and turn it on and it has all of your text layers in this one folder. If you need to work on it, click the arrow and you can see all your different ones. Um, we could also collapse. If you want to save space, we could collapse these, collapse these. Just That's just to make your layers toolbar a little bit cleaner. But let's go ahead and close this. All right, this is what I want to see for your screenshot, 100% zoom level and your layers toolbar. All right, hope this helps. Have fun.